fast forwarding when you got to University of Buffalo and you played football, right? So your story, you weren't on scholarship, you know, but you were still working hard, working hard on and off the field. What position did you play at University of Buffalo? I was a wide receiver. Wide receiver. Got it. Yep. So now you're at this crossroads, right? You have to figure out, I need to graduate, right? And you also want to kind of be around sports, I would say. That's majority of us who want to work with the active population. Sure. Now, when you got into the weight room, how did the rest of your undergrad play out? Because now you had all of the time, the not free time, but you had more time away from football, right? You started interning yep. in the weight room and then did something click for you those last few years? Honestly, man, it was my boss sitting me down and giving me the, uh, the national strength conditioning association textbook. And he said, look, he goes, if you're serious about this, I want you to read this textbook and take the test because to be CSCS certified, I mean, bro, this is back in 1999, 2000. Mm -hmm. Um, he said, you know, there's only 2000 or 2200 CSCS coaches. And he said, it's very coveted. You, you'd be in like the top 1% of the 0.1%, you know, and, and whatnot. So he gave me the textbook and I read it in a week. And this is the first time that I can say a textbook stimulated me, you know, on more than just a, okay, cool story, bro you know, type, type of, type of level. Um, I was highlighting, I was reading and rereading. I was actually taking the tests that are in there and like challenging my knowledge. And then I started to go and apply it in the weight room. And as I applied certain things in the weight room, that led me to experiment with other things. And then I was just like, started to get into Milo a lot. And, um, Oh, what is the, uh, iron mind? Uh, they, they have a fantastic website. They have a fantastic journal that they promote. So I started reading a lot about Olympic weightlifting, uh, combined with powerlifting and then just like a lot of strength lifting, like bodybuilding, but not really caring. How do you look? Just trying to get as strong as possible. And as I applied a lot of these concepts, I noticed that my athletes started to get stronger than everybody else. And I was just like, okay, what's going on here? And then it kind of became like the coaches that I worked with, they were super proud of me. But then as more and more athletes wanted to work with me and my systems, the coaches kind of got standoffish and, and they would get a little bit frustrated and be like, why does everybody want to train with him? Like I'm the head strength coach or I'm the assistant strength coach and whatnot. And it really came down to just efficiency. Like when you're a collegiate athlete, you want to be better. Mm -hmm. So if somebody else is in there is in the weight room and they're doing something that's more efficient than everybody else, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? Mm -hmm. Right. So the only person to not do that was my boss at the university of Hawaii, Tommy Hefferman. Yes. Tommy like welcomed me with arms open and was just guns blazing and he saw the changes that I was making in the, in the softball girls. And he was just like, you know, I want you to sit down. Let's look over the baseball program, the basketball program, the volleyball program. And he's like, let's put our heads together. And I want you to create a better program than I already have. And I was like, okay, wow, this is amazing. But it takes a certain humility to, to do something like that. And in the strength conditioning sector, you know, everybody's just, you know, chest puffed out. Like, oh, I got like six of my guys from the football team, to clean four Oh five, you know, that last lesson. It's like, it's always about numbers and who's harder, who's stronger, you know? And Tommy was like, this kid knows something. I can see that it's making a difference. Um, let's put our heads together and, and come up with something great for everybody, mm -hmm. you know? So when I got to that point, that's when I was like, okay, obviously I, I, it wasn't just an outlier at the university of Buffalo. Obviously I have a knack for something and I should have, because I used every spare piece of change, even that I found on the ground to buy books related to strength conditioning. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've read them all. I've read them all. That's amazing. And I think, I think that's 
that's one of the great aspects, right? You have this passion to keep improving and keep learning, and then you are applying it in real life situations. And there's so many great things that you said there that I want to dive into a little deeper. So remember all of this, because we're going to, this is a great episode because we're going to talk about how your journey has kind of evolved Mm -hmm. because this is, we'll get to it in a little while, but this is not really what you're doing now. And I think you have so much more knowledge and things to apply to just health and fitness, but in the performance training space. Sure. But the other thing that you said too, was that, you know, a lot of things, unfortunately, when it comes to strength and conditioning in the traditional sense, it's always just more, more, more. Like there's only one way to, to gauge if you're getting stronger, right? It's more right. weight. It's, you got to do more of this. It's the volume, right? And as you mentioned and alluded to, it's like, sometimes that doesn't necessarily translate to your sport or make you a better athlete. If your sport's right. going to be powerlifting or Olympic weightlifting, then it'll probably translate very well. But if your sport is like softball, the types of things that their body needs to adapt to is quite different than just pure brute ap- absolute strength, right? So I think right. you were diving into all of these concepts. And yes, Tommy is great. I mean, at UH, he does a great job. And it's good to hear that, you know, you guys collaborated because I think that's something in any health and fitness professional, there's not as much collaboration as there should be, I would say. And unfortunately, a lot of settings. I do think it's getting better. But when people with different experiences and disciplines come together, you can create something even greater than what you've been doing, right? Do you have any comments on that? Uh, You know, like when you talk about, you know, the passion and whatnot, in my experience, if you are going to do something like strength conditioning or which we'll talk about a little bit later, body work, it has to come down to passion as being what drives you. Okay. And and I guess that's one of the things that I really saw about Tommy was he was very passionate about his work. I mean, as a graduate assistant strength conditioning coach, we worked from five in the morning till six 30, seven o'clock at night. And Tommy would allow us to go home in the middle of the day to have lunch and rest up or something like that. But he lived out in Kaneohe, so he was never going home. And because my boss was never going home, I wasn't, I wasn't going home either. So I would stay with him uh, a majority of the time. And I think he definitely respected that, respected the fact like, okay, this kid's not trying to take the easy way out. And this isn't just a job to him or it's not just that, oh, I got a graduate assistantship in paradise. Like this kid actually wants to work and make a difference. And that is something that never presented itself to me in my life before. I mean, I had a bunch of different jobs, but none of them I ever said, wow, like I want to do this for the rest of my life. You know, I I mean, I was a dishwasher for a while. Like nobody grows up you know, what, what do you want to be, Andrew? And say, I want to be a dishwasher when I grow up, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. nobody really says that. Mm-hmm. But this was the first job or opportunity or career path that came across my, my life. And, you know, I didn't change it for a very, very long time. I didn't change it for about 16, 17 years. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, to this day, when I look back at everything that I've done, there's nothing that I think I didn't accomplish or miss. You know, I, I've worked with champions in multiple different sports. Uh, I've worked with collegiate athletes, high level collegiate athletes, high level uh, high school athletes, you know, and then I owned my own CrossFit gym for three and a half years. I, I ran that as an underground physical therapy clinic. Mm-hmm. So there was just uh, there, there was never any turning back. It was something that I always knew was going to be in me for a really long period of time. I don't really know where that came from or, or how it developed at such a young age. But, uh, you know, I wake up every single day and I, I'm, I feel very lucky to be doing what I'm doing. And I wish that a lot more people had that feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really I really do, man. Yes, definitely. And I, I can tell that you're very passionate for everything that you've done. All of these experiences, it's kind of funny how sometimes it leads you down to the path or, you know, what you're meant to do, right? How, how you're like, you're calling to help other people, Right. right? 